I know, chocolate, I don't mean to, no disrespect to chocolate, I love chocolate, but, but you know, me and lemons. Okay. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark, a food reporter for the New York Times, and we are making a not so classic, but almost classic lemon meringue pie. I wanted a softer, creamier filling, so I'm using a classic lemon curd. Then I did something kind of special to the meringue, and this is the part that I really love about this pie. Grated lemon zest right into the meringue. It just makes the flavor pop. So you've got the sweetness, you have the fluffiness, but you also just have a little bit of the zing. And to me, that is a perfect lemon meringue pie. For a lemon meringue pie, the focus really should be on the contrast between that tangy filling and then that fluffy sweet topping. Crust is totally negotiable. You can use any kind of crust you like. I have just a regular all butter pie crust. You can even buy the pie crust, buy the pie dough. It's perfectly fine. You know, just do the thing that's going to get you to the lemon meringue pie. That is all. I am gonna par bake it. Par baking means that I'm going to bake the crust without any filling in it until it is mostly cooked. It's not gonna be 100% cooked. It's gonna be like 90% cooked. And then it's gonna finish baking with the filling in it. Overhang, I'm folding it over. You could trim it off. I like to fold it over. I like to have sturdy edge and then I'm gonna crimp it. Now I'm just gonna score the bottom of the pie crust with a fork. It keeps air bubbles from forming. And that is it. Now I'm just gonna throw this right in the freezer. I'm not gonna bother covering it because it's only gonna be there for about half an hour. It is pretty much frozen solid which is good because that means it's not gonna slump when we put it in the oven, I hope. Before baking this, I'm going to line it with foil and I'm gonna to top it with pie weights. Push the foil into the pie, you're kind of helping it keep its shape so that it doesn't slump. I'm using really cool pie weights, which to me look like a big bowl of mints, but they're not, they are ceramic pie weights. You can also just use dried beans, you could use rice. And then that's it, I'm gonna throw this in the oven. I'm gonna let that bake at 425 for about 12 minutes. Then I'm gonna take it out of the oven, lower the temperature to 350, take the foil and the weights out, look for any air bubbles, smush them down if they're there, put it back in the oven, and then let it finish baking through at the lower temperature. And that'll take another, you know, 15-ish. As Soon as it's golden brown, it's done. While that crust is baking, let's make the curd filling. A cool thing about making a lemon meringue pie is you are using the whole egg. You're using the yolks for the filling and then you're using the whites to make the topping. So it's a little, it's its own little universe. It's nice. Step one is to separate the eggs. This is a little trick. If you are new to separating eggs and you're a little bit nervous, or if you just wanna make 100% sure you don't get any yolk in the white, for each egg white, separate it into one bowl, pour the white into a separate bowl, and then that's the safe space. That's like, there is no yolk in this bowl. And then you do it again. And then if you get a little bit of yolk in the white, you can just throw that out and you don't have to worry about tainting the whole bowl. This is what I usually do, is through my hand. Just right through the fingers. I have my four egg whites. So right here, this is for my meringue and I'm just gonna put it aside. When I was growing up, my grandmother always made lemon meringue pie and she did it straight from the mix. You know, the box of pudding and then she'd make the meringue and it was delicious, it was great. But you know, when you use a box of pudding, it's always a little bit on the sweeter side. But then I tried it with lemon curd. So there's something about the creaminess of the lemon curd against the fluffiness of the meringue that t blows it over the top for me. A little pinch of salt. So I'm gonna turn the heat on to pretty low because you wanna Bring this up slowly. So when you're making any kind of curd or anything with eggs and you've got your pan over the heat, do not walk away. You gotta keep stirring it because otherwise you might curdle the eggs. Once you see that the mixture is starting to steam, it's gonna go pretty quickly from here. You can see that it's starting to get thick. I'm gonna run it through my strainer just to be extra safe. The thing about curd is that it does thicken up as it cools. So don't expect it to look fully cooled, you know, very thick lemon curd yet. It'll get there. At this point, the crust should almost be ready. As soon as it comes out of the oven, I'm gonna pour the hot curd into the crust, put it back in the oven, and if you start with a hot curd, it'll bake more quickly than if you start with a cold curd that you've made ahead. And that is gonna bake until it is set. That's gonna take anywhere from 18 minutes is the quickest, it could take up to 40. Um, it really depends on what kind of pie pan you use, what kind of oven you have, and then how hot your curd is when it goes in. The curd is setting, hopefully, and we're gonna make the meringue, um, which is the fun part. 
I mean, it's all fun, but this is the extra fun part. I'm going to use a glass mixing bowl. Usually I would use metal. Metal is a better conductor of heat. It goes a little more quickly, but then you, you're not gonna be able to see it in the metal. So I'm gonna do it in glass so you all can see. It'll be very dramatic. So this is a double boiler setup. I have a saucepan. There is about an inch and a half of water. And I'm gonna set this right inside the pan. And what's gonna happen is the steam is going to heat the egg white sugar mixture. The sugar is gonna dissolve into the egg whites, but it's not gonna be so hot that the egg whites are gonna cook. So did you know that there are three different kinds of meringues? There is a uncooked meringue, which is called a French meringue, but it's not quite as stable as what I'm doing right here, which is called a Swiss meringue. And what that means is that I'm letting the sugar dissolve into the whites. The dissolved sugar creates more structure so that when I beat it, it's gonna stay fluffier for a longer amount of time. It's also slightly glossier, which is nice. And I think it works really well on meringue pies because you've got the gloss and it'll have better keeping quality. Like if you can eat this pie the next day and it's gonna be okay. Then the third kind of meringue is called an Italian meringue. And that takes this one step further. But I think pretty much for most home cooks, a Swiss meringue is gonna be just fine. So what you're looking for is the sugar to dissolve. And what that means is if you rub a little of the egg white mixture between your fingers, it should feel smooth. It shouldn't feel, you know, sandy. Another bonus of doing it the Swiss meringue way is that this is actually pasteurizing the whites. It's making them food safe. So you can eat this without baking it. Oh yeah, yeah, I feel it. Okay, it's starting to, now we can, we can beat it. We can just beat the heck out of it in the mixer. So this amount of egg white, it's going to like triple in volume. It's just so cool to watch it grow. It's one of the very cool things about making meringue. It's, it's seriously, it's like magic. It really is. All right, so we're going to see where we are at. So what I'm looking for is stiff peaks, and I'm going to show you what that means. When you lift the beaters up, you're looking for peaks that kind of, see how that's, it's a stiff peak, it stays up at the top. If it bent over a little bit, that's fine too. So this is a tablespoon of zest, and I'm going to kind of just scatter it in so it doesn't fall in one place. The lemon zest really adds so much flavor to this meringue. You know, meringue traditionally is one dimensional, it's just sweet, right? It's texture, but it's not flavor. This has texture and flavor. Okay, so I'm just going to plop this on top and then I'm going to make it look pretty. Plop. And that's it. I turn the oven up to 400 while you weren't looking. Right now what we're going to do is brown the meringue and firm it up. So our pie is out of the oven, it is perfectly cool. You need to make sure to let it cool completely, like three, four, five hours. Otherwise, when you cut it, the curd may not be set. Right before you cut it, you wanna just garnish it with a little bit more of the lemon zest. So now, now do I get to eat it? <laughs> okay, a nice fluffy layer on top of the creamy curd. It's jiggling just right, but it's not running. The remembering pie is just the best. And this one, it's a little more tart than usual. Mm. And a lot more creamy. Oh, it's so good. Having the meringue flavored with the lemon zest makes a huge difference. And in case you really love the idea of flavored meringues like I do, I also have two more recipes at NYT Cooking. One is for a blood orange curd with a butterscotch meringue. And then I also have a show-stoppingly gorgeous raspberry tart with a raspberry chocolate meringue on top. It's meringue for meringue and raspberry and fruit for you chocolate lovers out there too.